So we have uh, Dr. Ravin with us and he will uh, teach us how to improve a helmet from a trauma victim and how to manually stabilize the cervical spine. Let's see. I talk to the patient. Hitesh, hi, I am Dr. Ravindra. Please don't move your neck. Okay. And while uh, talking to the patient, remove the windshield and talk so that he will be able to listen. Okay. Now you will hold the helmet. And I'll, I'll stabilize his neck manually. I'll stabilize the jaw uh, with my hand. One, now, one hand is at the back. One hand at the back and one hand on the front. And now gently we'll take the patient into the neutral position until the patient feels pains. If patient is feeling a pain, we'll stop this procedure. Otherwise, patient, if, it, if he is not feeling the pain, then we will move the neck gently onto the neutral position. Now the patient is in neutral position here and his eyes are open here. He is interacting. My one hand is at the back of this neck and one hand at the chin so i'm uh, stabilizing the neck here and now sir will open this so first he will open the straps over here so straps are open if straps are not open you can cut the straps and then you have to hold the helmet like this and now in a forward and backward motion gently you will remove the helmet this is forward this is backward, this is forward, and simultaneously I am on. So neck is not moved. Now I am gently don't, don't, keeping the don't neck. Don't leave the neck. Yeah, we should not leave the neck until and unless you will stabilize the neck manually from behind. So can you please put your hands onto the uh, patient's neck? So uh, uh, see the movement of this hand two fingers apart and thumb is up and then you will put these two fingers right over here and here now sir is on and i'll be off so now i'm off so now in this way we have removed it and then secondly you can apply the cervical collar uh -huh. so we have a cervical collar over here so uh, can you just uh, tell us the second way of holding the neck okay uh -huh. so in a second way of holding the neck is so I am I'm holding it and then what you will do is you will slide your fingers just behind your thumb will be up and with your two wrist you are manually stabilizing this okay right like this so you you're not only looking for the airway you are you are listening the sound of this airway and then both the hands will be on the neck surrounding and holding the neck firmly over here so that the c-spine will not move at any side so these are the two techniques for holding the neck manually and uh, uh, now i'll show that how to put a cervical collar and how to uh, take a patient onto the spine board over here so this is the common cervical collar actually it is easily available in market so we are taking this cervical collar over here what i'll do is i'll slide the collar right over here so correct cervical collar is also important okay so you can take a measurement right from the uh, below the chin and then you can check with the cervical collar and then you can hold it so what i'll do is i'll slide it over here so can you please off with this hand so you're off and i'm on right right over here so I'm holding it, right? I'm not leaving it. And then again, you can take charge and you can hold it. So now this is a cervical collar fitted to the patient. Now at the third step, what we have to do is, uh, uh, first you have to remove the helmet. You have checked, you have done this initial assessment after the scene size up, you have done the initial assessment. You have seen the patient as conscious in, in this level of consciousness is alert. Talk to me, uh, he is interacting with you. Then, uh, the, at the next step, what you will do, uh, you, you will carry on the initial assessment based on a generalized mechanism of injury. Like this, as a this, he is a biker and he is on the he is found on the road uh, with helmet. So this is generalized mechanism of injury. So now, what we have to do is in the next step is a rapid trauma survey. So with the rapid trauma survey, this has to be done simultaneously 
uh, with uh, uh, you know putting up uh, putting onto the spine board. So what I'll do is I'm having few equipments along with me for the physical examination like okay. stethoscope and torch. Yeah, torch. So what I'll do is my hand will be glowed one. I have put glowed on my hand, and then what I'll do is I'll start with the head. I'll see the stain, blood stain on my gloves. And I'll see any kind of depression or decap vitellus on the face. What do, what do we mean by decap vitellus? D for deformity, C for contusion, A for abrasion, P for penetration, B for burn, T for uh, any tenderness, uh, then uh, L for laceration, S, S for swelling, and then T I C that is tenderness, instability, trepidation, common word. So this everything I'll look after into this patient. So what I'll do is I'll just see there is no injury over here. Then I'll see the facial injuries over over the face. There are no facial injuries. I'll check the pupils. Nose, mouth. Can you please open your mouth? Show me your tongue. Okay, fine. And then the ears. Behind the ears. Okay, there's no bleeding. Okay, and then also you need to check the neck. So once you will, <coughs> once you have checked the neck, then you will put the cervical collar over here. Okay. So uh, what do we need to check into the neck? So we need to check any tracheal deviation, any neck swelling, or any decay pitial on onto the neck. Then we will check the uh, bony injury on, on on the on the chest. Okay, with inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. Okay. <coughs> So there is no tenderness or any decapital is felt over here. I'll check with the sounds. So I'll check with the sounds in all the quadrants. And then what I'll do is I'll go to the abdomen. Simultaneously, I'll palpate the abdomen. So abdomen is soft and there is no decapitalis. Then the pelvis side to side and from up to down and both the femurs knees. knees and we need to expose the patient in the chair and then also we need to check the dorsalis pedis and posterior for circulation both the radials and both upper arms so i'm comparing both the radials also Volume is good and capillary refill is less than 3 seconds. Okay. Now we need to long roll the patient and take the patient out of the spine board. Surplus. This so we should not, you know, uh, take these uh, hands up uh, from the leg since we are doing the manual here. So this is our spine board. Ready with all the straps and head restriction device. This head restriction device is important actually. I think that unless we put the patient onto the head restriction device, we should not uh, remove the manual stabilization. You need to go there. Sir, can you please come here? Okay. okay. I'll ro long roll now. To patient on one side so that I can not only examine the back, we also need to put the patient onto the spine board into the next procedure after the rapid trauma surgery. So, what I do is, so I'll put one hand onto the shoulder, second hand onto the hip, and simultaneously on the cross hand, this hand will be on the hip, and one hand will be on the uh, on the knee. So on the count of three, you will count, and then you will rotate, and then we will we will follow your uh, instructions. One, two, three. So we have long rolled this patient. Now I'll see any decap vitellus right over here. So there is nothing has been found. So now we can put the patient onto the spine board, right? You will tell. You will give us an instruction. One, two, three. Right. So you kept the patient onto the spine board right here, okay? But patient is not completely on the spine board. So what we may do is, 
we we'll put the patient down and then we will put the patient up. So you will tell us. One, two, three. Down. Again. One, two, three. Up. Give slide. Right? Now what we will do is we'll put both the head restriction devices right near to the patient's head. Right here. Okay. Then we will leave. We can leave now. Can leave the hand. Can put it right over here. Two steps. One step will be at the forehead. And one step will be at the chin. Now you can do this way. Right? Now we can. We have to put the straps onto the chair. First is the chair strap. Should come around the shoulder. Mm -hmm. So this both the strap. <coughs> sorry. This both the strap has crossed the chest, and then one strap at the knee side, <coughs> and one additional strap will keep it leg side. This is how we have completed our rapid trauma survey, and we kept the patient onto the spine board. Now this patient is ready for the transfer. Uh, we will leave this patient to the ambulance and we will start our secondary survey where we will again do the head to toe examination along with uh, GCS and uh, other important examination and uh, all the vitals, finger stick, glucose test, everything we will perform into the ambulance and then we will contact our medical direction to the hospital and ongoing examination we will check his vitals and GCS and interventions again in every 5 minutes. If patient is non-critical, then in every 15 minutes, if our route is lengthy. Now we will see how to lift the patient also. So can you please come at the head side. So if you divide the body into uh, two parts, this part is more heavier, leg will be less heavier. So we need to sit near to the side of chest. And he will be at the uh, head side. Now, few few things are important uh, while lifting the patient. First is uh, you have to sit near to the patient. If you are sitting far away from the patient, uh, you will have more actually uh, uh, weight of you. You feel more weight of a patient, right? Secondly, uh, you have to use your thigh muscles while lifting. Don't uh, put a back pressure, otherwise you will have a uh, any you know uh, any spasm or a muscle muscle spasm or any spine injury, right? So use your biceps and your thighs both things. And like this, not like this. Yeah, you have to hold like this, not like this. Otherwise, if you are holding like this, your this muscle portion will be here, and this hand should come in between the legs. Perfect. And uh, both the gaps, uh, gap between both the hands should be at one feet. So one hand should be near to the shoulder and one hand near to the hip, right? <coughs> so now head is very important. So the person who is sitting on a head, uh, he will give an instruction of a lifting, right? So on the count of three, no. The team will lift. So you need to coordinate. Means that the person who is sitting on the head side, he will coordinate with all. He will first see the body image of all the participants, all the persons, those who are lifting, and then he need to check. Uh, are you ready? Are you ready? And are you ready? Everybody has to make an eye to eye yes. contact with each other. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. 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 One, two, three. Gently, you need to lift, and then you will shift this patient to the ambulance. Where you will perform your further uh, history and physical examination. Are they in the Okay, stop. Sir, please hold it. Listen, they're trying. 
Okay, we can keep it down again. On the count of one, two, three, down. So uh, this is how uh, we will perform the further physical examination, and we will take the history inside the ambulance, and we will do the online examination, and then we can safely ship the patient to the uh, diagnostic facility or to the hospital. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, sir.